Hello Cricket Enthusiasts, welcome to USA Cricket Spotlight here on the Bib Cricket channel. In this electrifying episode, we dive into the epic clash between the USA and Canada in a five-match T20 international series in Texas. And guess what? We've got the one and only cricket maestro, West Indies and America's cricket commentator, Nicoletum Chandani, bringing his analysis as our special guest. We invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Nikhil, thanks for joining us. The much talked about pre-ICC T20 World Cup, T20 International Series between the USA and Canada is here. What are your thoughts? Massive series for both teams. I think uh, from both of their perspectives, it's been a while since they've played T20 International Cricket. There's been a lot of focus on the League 2, which is a 50 over format for Canada. Uh, for the USA, they went into Zimbabwe. I obviously went to the World Cup qualifiers and now for them, especially hosting a World Cup, I think it's a massive opportunity. So the fact that you've got these two teams who will play each other in the T20 World Cup, there's a lot on the line for both teams and I'm excited to see how they go. Interesting series ahead indeed. How do you expect the series to end results-wise, given that Canada defeated Scotland and United Arab Emirates recently? In the USA, while being at home, has been dormant in the format for over a year. If you look at the most recent meetings between these two teams, they've always been close. Uh, a couple of super overs in the past, one in Antigua back in 2021, another one here in the US uh, in 2018. Canada have just edged the US on a few occasions, but they've always been close games. I think probably they start with the edge just because, as you mentioned, the fact that they've been playing cricket, they've found, I think, a really good leadership core in guys like Saad Ben Zafar, who's their captain, Aaron Johnson at the top of the order. Um, and then they've got Shramanta and others that can complement, I think, their batting. But I think when you look at the US's team on paper, adding someone like Corey Anderson with his experience, Harmeet Singh, who's played at the Under-19 World Cup, and a few other guys, it, it really promises to be quite a thrilling series. But for right now, before anything and any cricket has played, just because they've played a lot more this year, I think I give Canada the, the edge. I see, interesting prediction there, the USA selectors have noticeably, for the first time, called up New Zealand big hitting batter Corey Anderson, former Indian under-19 left-arm spinner Harmeet Singh, and some other players with international connections. What is your take on the selections? I think not only uh, will it improve their, their quality-wise, obviously you add internationals like Corey Anderson who's got a 36 ball, won the international 100, Harmeet Singh not only has done well in the N19 World Cup, but here in the States. MLC last year was a standout bowler in the power play um, throughout the innings, really. But what I think the biggest impact of their presence is, is competition for places. So now you've got, I think, a, a much deeper pool of players to select from, but there will also be that added competition within the group where guys know that they have to perform because there's guys waiting in the wings. Nitish Kumar, Milan Kumar, two guys who I haven't mentioned yet, but two guys who I think are, are very good, uh, especially against spin, can be middle over options where I think the USA have struggled in the past. So there are guys that are coming in now into this team that will, uh, will have to wait a bit for a place in the side, but will sort of, I think, make the guys like Aaron Jones, Gajan and Singh, the incumbent guys, well aware that, look, we need to perform if we want to stay in the team and what would be a competitive team to make come that T20 World Cup. Got you there. There has also been a debut call-up for South African fast bowling all-rounder, Shadley Van Shockwick, who could add value to the USA bowling attack, which is being spearheaded by left-arm pacer, Saurabh Netravakar. What is your take on his selection? I think what he does really well is the tape pace off the ball. So he's got a few different variations. Uh, he had to rose his fingers over it, the traditional off-cutter, but he's also got a back of the hand store ball. And when you look at the pacers that come through here in the US, it's a lot of seam up. Uh, guys like Ali Khan, Jasteep Singh, mainly bowling seam up. I, I think Van Scalvik does his two things well. Take pace off the ball on the slower pitches that you get in the Caribbean and USA. But also, I think at the back end of the innings, his execution has been really good. So someone that can go to the wide Yorker, go to the Yorkers and nail them consistently. So really excited to see how he goes. And he's also a finishing option with bat in hand as well. Interesting. There is also the first time call up of South African wicketkeeper batter Andre Gauss. What are your thoughts on his inclusion? Dominance. Um, it'll be interesting to see where he bats in that order. You've got Monat Patel, Stephen Taylor, who have opened for the USA in T20 international cricket. But he has shown on every opportunity he's been given, whether that be in the Major League last year, uh, the ILT20 where he was at earlier this year, he's just dominant. Uh, he can really take your bowling attack apart. 
he's very consistent as well. He's got a lot of experience playing for Free State in South Africa and playing with a lot of international players. I think he's a, a really welcome addition. Probably the one I'm most excited about when you look at the new players in this team. And it's just that ability to take you down. It'll be interesting to see how Canada sort of plan for him. Someone that they won't have as much information on. But it's a great look at him um, just in international cricket on a whole and just to see sort of the minimal adjustments teams make as we look towards that World Cup. Point taken. Another interesting call up to the USA team is Canadian batter Nidish Kumar. He has cross borders. How big of a deal is his addition? Huge asset, I think, in this series just because of the information. Um, there will be, I think, a lot of reliance on him because he knows the players so well, would have played with Sadbin so far, would have played with a lot of the guys um, currently in the team. So I think the fact that he knows sort of their games inside out does help the USA in a lot of ways. But in terms of his personal game, someone, again, who could come in the middle overs, rotate, strike well, but also, I think, attack, spin, and even pace at times, but definitely stronger against the spin. An area where I think the USA have missed out. But there's a lot of competition from places in that top order. Gajanan Singh, Aaron Jones have done that role well in the past. So I wonder when he will get a game if he starts. <laughs> However, I know he'll be hungry to show sort of for a new team against his former team that he's still got at the international level. Got you there. What about the captain and vice captain? Moaning Patel and Aaron Jones? How impactful do you believe they will be in the series? I mean, those two have been, I think, in the one day international format where the USA have played a lot of them. Those two have been their best batters. So, I think it's quite simple. They've always maintained quite a high standard. Monat Patel has been quite good in the power play. I wonder if he comes down to number three now with Andreas House, but we'll have to wait and see. But just runs, man. Simple expectation. And they'll be, I think, hungry to just show that the others that are coming in, they'll have to sort of wait their turn because these guys have been there and have done it for a long time on the international level. Heard you. Now looking at the USA bowling unit. In the absence of the injured frontline fast bowler, Ali Khan, who do you see leading from the front? Oshtosh Kenjige. Left arm spinner, uh, likely to make his T20 international debut. It's quite amazing. He's never played T20 international cricket. But for me, uh, I'm really impressed by him watching him in the MLC. Just the consistency, constantly attacking the stumps. Uh, quite brave as well. Slow in his pace. I think that for me was a big standout. Even when he's under pressure and being hit for boundaries, he still maintains that pace and is quite can be quite wicked taking. I think what he does well is just frustrate batter. So in a Canada team that has quite a few right-handers, I think he could be key spinning the ball away. Indeed, he could prove to be a handful for the Canadian batters. We now move on to the players who have been overlooked by the USA selectors, some of whom are playing at the first class level and were you able to break their contracts and make it to the national trials. These players include Ian Holland, Cameron Steele, Brody Couch, Cam Stevenson, and Cameron Gannon. What are your thoughts? Sure, to be honest, uh, uh, Ian Holland, I know, has played a lot of county cricket in the past, so I'm not sure his availability uh, when it came when it comes to that. But again, I think they went with the best performers at the Nationals just because of the closeness of this series, and they can't really fault them for that. Um, a lot of those guys, Cameron Steele, for example, took three wickets today for Surrey, so I'm not sure he was available for international selection. And I just think they went with what they could see, and those that are the Nationals was probably um, the best bet for the selectors. I think they'll back uh, the 15 that they have. They've got a couple of quality all-rounders that they've included. Harmit Singh, Corey Anderson. I think they'll be very happy. And I think on paper, they may even start the stronger of the two sides. Interesting. And as we look to wrap up, what do you think about USA major and minor league cricket players, such as in Muk Chand and Shane Jayasurya, who have been overlooked by the selectors? No real surprise for me that someone like Muk Chand didn't get in because I don't think he scored the amount of runs that Nitish Kumar and others scored. So. For him, it'll be quite simple. I mean, perform domestically to try and break into that team for Bangladesh, but I don't see much changes with this team. I think Stuart Law will be looking to sort of build around this 15 heading into the World Cup. Well, thank you, Nikhil, for joining us. It has been a pleasure. That's a wrap on this explosive episode of USA Cricket Spotlight here on the Bib Cricket Channel. But wait, the cricket party doesn't end here. Stay connected with us for all the latest cricket updates behind the scenes action and exclusive content by following us on all our social media channels facebook instagram and twitter and for more thrilling cricket shows head over to the biff cricket website to catch all the exciting cricket action news and analysis